Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 445. Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitter is here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professional wrestling. And we got so much to talk about with me from the, the nether realm is uh, Papa Lunchbox. How you doing, sir? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm on fire. You probably can't see it. It's uh, invisible, but please rest assured that for the remainder of this episode, I will be on fire. Uh, it, 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 are you are you the girl on fire? I'm not the girl on fire because that is a metaphor, and I am literally, actually, on literal fire. Oh. I am burning alive right now. Oh, that's not good. Also with us is Mad Mike from Pooh Kips, Poe Kipsy, New York. Jeez, I'll get this one of these days, sir. It's okay. It's kind of a shitty town, so really Poop. either of It's Poop Kipsy. Oh, poop, poop Kipsy! Uh, how you doing, poop Mike? Kipsy. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, Mike? Since I've seen you just twenty four hours ago, actually, no, several hours ago. We're talking movies, huh? Yeah, we were talking movies, sword. We were talking movies because I had to set up the whole doc myself, and I got to pick the stories I like. I like it. I like it. Um, and of course, this is your Mayhem Show. Uh, you can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to us at iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio in audio and video forms, however you prefer to consume us. Consume us. Consume the fiery lunchbox. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm well done. He's well done. He's well done. You can also well, drop us. probably like medium rare at this point. Okay. By the end of the show, I'll be well Keep done. us updates. Keep us updated throughout the show, please, sir. Um, you can also. It hurts. If you'd like the music, please check out basicsickness.com. He, he provides the uh, intro and outro music for us here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show and Indie Mayhem Show as well. Um, and uh, also, you can drop us a line to that email address at. Good times. Yeah, that's right. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com uh, or that phone number at 412-206-WMS0. He is on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, you can also find Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and the great Facebook group where we have so much discussion going on. And please, uh, uh, iTunes discussion. comments are welcome. Anywhere you can comment, share us with your friends. Say, hey, man, digging this show. Tweet it out. Um, show some love and help us uh, grow. And you can join us here Tuesdays at about 9 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Um, also, big thanks to our Patreon supporters. You heard it at the top of the show, but uh, thanks to thewrestlingrevolution.com and Bo Diggity. Woo! 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 Helping us out. Help helping us out uh, and putting their money where their mouth is. If, if you're digging the show, please go to wrestling. Uh, I'm sorry, patreoncom slash show and you can support us that way. Hey, uh, we love our fan mail, and we love our fans, right, guys? We mm-hmm. do. They make me feel tingly in my bottom. We have clearance to uh, for fabulous prizes for some contests. What? Um, we have, of course, you know, we are affiliated with SorgatronMedia.com and PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, there's so much going on here. We have uh, most of the feds in the Pittsburgh area have digital downloads and DVDs on PittsburghWrestling.com. So we're going to try to do a contest of the week. So if you're listening, you want to know how to participate. Uh, we're going to try to do something a little different every week. Um, this week, we want your emails. We want your emails. We want more emails than we can probably read on the show. But we'll read them all. I'll tell you that. Uh, but if you drop us a line to good times at wrestling oh, I thought you guys were going to do it again. Um, good times! Thank you. That, that's times. the one. 
We uh, will give you the best email of the week. It can be funny. It can be thought provoking, whatever direction you can go. I know, uh, I know some of you guys out there are really good at either or. So please send your emails in. Uh, they can be anytime with, between now and the next show. And uh, the winner of the week will get a free link to Best of CM Punk Volume 1 in digital download. Great stuff on there from around his 2002 to 2003 era. Uh, uh, big names Be- on wait, there. What? Sword, yes. Best of CM Punk? That's a great prize. Am I eligible? <laughs> yes. No, you're not eligible. Wait, what, why not? I can email. You, th- no. I can email and then read my own email. You are not eligible. But I want to win that prize, Sorg. That's a great prize. It is a good prize, but we're also uh, uh, putting our prize our prize boners to WrestlingGameShow.com as well. If you're interested yeah. in being a contestant on there, also hit us up at the email address or on Twitter, uh, at Mayhem Show. And uh, if you're interested in participating, uh, listen to the show. See if you dig what we're doing. And we're on the honor system. No studying up. I don't believe that they do. You guys don't do the oh. topics in advance, right? Oh, hell the fuck no. Um, (laughs) By the way, if anyone has ever listened to this show and wanted me to shut up about wrestling knowledge, challenge me. You can pick the event. I don't care. I like it. Yeah. I'm doing a challenge to the Mayhem universe. That's right. Uh, Typically, they record on Thursday nights about 10, 30, 11 o'clock on Google Hangouts. So if you're familiar with that, you are good to go. Uh, So please hit us up and we'll have some fabulous prizes for that as well. So with that, and again, hit, again, hit us up with your emails for that uh, digital copy of Best of CM Punk Volume 1. Um, and you can check out more information about that over in the International Wrestling Cartel section at PittsburghWrestling.com. So Monday night was ECW Exposed. The hashtag, I know the Mayhem Show account put out some very interesting questions. So we thought we'd put out, and, and we'll talk about ECW in a moment, but for the fan interaction portion of this, um, we asked people to use WMS Exposed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, Sorry, we got... Is this why I take off my pants? No, 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 that's why, I, that's why I have preview monitors, so I can enjoy it myself. White, what? No. W, w I've been, platinum. I've been, I've been resting my shaft in the little sling that I keep under my desk for just such an occasion. Oh, geez. Um, anyways. Uh, it we, has its own personal heater. We got a couple questions from Mainstream Matt on the uh, hashtag WMS Exposed. And again, if you... Uh, this. Th- th- y- you can still hit us up in the next week if there's you want any questions about us, about the show, anything like that. Uh, hash up, hashtag WMS Exposed. Uh, he asked first, honestly, how much longer are you going to let uh, DJ Lunchbox root for Cena before he there's an intervention? There was kind of one when you were drinking at that uh, wedding a few weeks ago. That was not an intervention. I don't know. There was a heart-to-heart something that was, going on. That was, that was me leveling with Jen Carlin's. Okay. I, I described as the, the real reason as to why I'm a fan of Cena, and I leveled with her. And I wanted her to understand that when it comes down to it, uh, Cena will always be there. He's not going away. Something crazy would have to happen for John Cena to go away. John Cena. Dean, um, Dean Ambrose I, can disappear. John, John Cena is the then, now, like and that. forever at the, at the top of the show. Mike? I know exactly what it would take for John Cena to go away. Hmm. Nikki Bella would have to forget her pill. Oh. That's exactly what it would take, because fucker will be gone. Gone. He'd be on Lucha Underground wrestling as Juan Cena so quick. (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) We have another question. Um, Has Sorgatron ever been late or missed a Tuesday podcast session? I am sick as a dog right now, and I'm still freaking here. Sorg, Sorg, there was one week. There was one week where all of you guys in Pittsburgh were at a SmackDown taping. Yes. And it was a Tuesday night, and I recorded a solo show. Yes. By myself. Now, we have moved the show. We have moved the show to Wednesdays whenever there's like a SmackDown in town or something else is going on. I don't count that. Yeah, no, but I I I think you're. 
I recorded the solo show, yeah. and because I didn't know how to bring other people in, it was me talking to Eamon in the chat room for two hours. <laughs> Sir, I think you're forgetting, though. There was a week where I think you were either out of town or recording or something like that, and so we ran a show ourselves. Yep. And I think I might have run the boards, and there might have been one or two other people in the studio or, I, or something I do re- along those lines. Was, was that like early on when we were just audio? No, this was when you were you had your basement office. Oh, because at one point you showed up halfway through the show and just sat on the couch and was like, "Fuck you guys, go ahead run the show. I'm just gonna be on it." <laughs> that was good, I, and I think well for a while also, um, I had Shashi down here and I was training him to do some of this stuff, and there was a, a you know feeling kind of like how I'm feeling right now. Um, it got so bad, and I said, "I just can't go," and I was like, "Please do the show," and I sat upstairs. I think I might have listened in. Um, I remember and, that, and that yeah. was it. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's it's we don't miss. I don't know. Like early on, we miss shows week to week, every once in a while. Uh, we would we would take off a week for Christmas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And we take we take Christmas off. Yeah, uh, and we'll depending on where Christmas lies depends on how many weeks we do. For instance, um, I think we're going to do most of December the way it way it ends up. Like I think we're well, Christmas is like Thursday or Friday. We're probably going to do Christmas week unless something changes schedule wise. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, By the way, sort the hashtag WMS exposed. Um, Alex Cars wrote us a question in the chat room, and I looked at it quickly, and it looked like hashtag WM sex posed. So, oh no! Yeah, who has the best hair? JP that works on our video team. Easy. We were calling <laughs> yeah, him hair. We, we, we... Um, I'm going to say one of the ladies of Mayhem. That's that's where I'm gonna go with that. Wait, wait, wait! Just one of or a specific well, one? I don't know which one offhand. I, I would have to see a side by side, but I would assume it's not one of the fellas. It's one of the ladies of Mayhem. Okay, that's weird and that, no, that's that's, yeah, that's just, real creepy, man. Then again, I don't know who JP is. He is not. He basically on. said all all the girls have pretty hair. Let me uh, smell yes. it. Okay, Rowan, Mad Rowan. <laughs> Hold on, let me she's get not, my mask. She's not here, man. She's not here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that was fun. Well, anyways, yeah, ECW exposed last night. One of their pushes for the free, free, free uh, WWE networks. Notice not much WWE network live mentions during Raw in England, where it. Uh, there were none. There were none. Um, Although there were there quite were a few, and they were all done by the crowd. Well, mm. yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, well, they, I think they did mention it on commentary where the crowd couldn't hear for the most part. Um, but I, I did see a sign for nine ninety nine crossed out and like six point three pounds or something. Uh, I appreciated mm-hmm. that sign. So, um, but but still, they're doing an ECW week now. Um, uh, <laughs> what? That yeah, girl and just asked who has the best body hair. Uh, LB, easy. Yeah, I was gonna go LB. Hey. Incorrect. Uh, you may think that, but I actually have no body hair. Oh. <laughs> My yeah. hair exists here and nowhere else. Um, Top of my head to my neck. And then it stops. And then it stops. There's nothing else. It's like a new more baby boy, but adult. Um, it's true. Still just as chubby. So they're doing the ECW week. They, they put uh, 47 new episodes of Hardcore TV. Um, did I... Are, did they add pay per views that weren't on previously? Uh, the yeah, they added slam. some pay per views and some uh, some episodes. Okay, because I, I, I thought I, I thought you know I was thinking about that because I, I I when they were saying oh all the pay per views I think like ECWs were ones that they said hey there's a couple holes here um, I wonder what the reasons were probably like license <laughs> or something well well the um, the ones they added I believe weren't actually pay per views oh they were events. Like the Cyber because, Slam. Yeah, because Barely Legal 90, I want to say 96, was ECW's first pay per view on television. Yeah. But they had like November to Remembers in 94 and 95. They just weren't pay per views. They were special events that were like sold as DVDs and as VHSs. Okay. And same, th- same thing with Cyber Slam. Because okay. Cyber Slam was never an actual pay-per-view, but it was an event that they had yearly. So, And it was something that like they put out on DVD or something, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Is it under, I wonder, is it under pay-per-views, you think, or? 
Uh, I don't know. I can check quick while we're uh, talking. Yeah, please about uh, take a look at that. But we did have the ECW exposed as well. Um, I thought a really interesting QA. I, I was worried that we would have just rehashed a lot of stuff from the latest Paul Hammond DVD, which was very revealing about ECW to begin with. There was a little bit, but things like um, ha- t- telling how um, Brian Pillman was under contract with WCW as he worked with ECW the entire time. That and was an amazing story. That was a good story. That whole thing was a because. Like, I was with Joey Styles trying to follow along the trends and everything. That was fantastic. Yeah. Certainly. Um, it, it's in it, it, that there were so many stars. They said they said they, they had lawsuits with WCW seven times. Which... Sork, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, e- the ECW shows that we're talking about. Yeah. They're under the vault under okay. ECW Exposed. Oh, okay. That's where the Hardcore Heaven 95 is, November to Remember 95, because uh, I had the... I had the um, what you call it? The year wrong. It was '97 when they first got pay per view. Nice, nice. And I guess so. All, and so everything before that's an ECW. I'm, I'm probably going to go through that a little bit. Like I, I, uh, and I've been loving uh, uh, yesterday or actually this morning. Uh, you know, I, I love like no, I don't have cable, but I love just putting the stream on on WWE. Like if it's a day where I'm like I'm not going to listen to regular podcasts that I do. Or today I wasn't feeling good, so I was like, I can put this on and just, if I fall asleep, it's probably something I watched before or I can go back to, right? And um, those interviews, they dropped a few Mick Foley interviews in between some of the shows, where they always do the promos and everything. Um, epic stuff I've never heard. Like, And I've seen a lot of them, because I own like the old Mick Foley DVDs. Um the ECW DVDs, you know, that, that WWE's put out at least, right? Um, it, it makes me want to really dive into not all of ECW, but try to find the high points. Like, I don't feel like I want to sit and watch Hardcore he- not Hardcore Heaven, um, Hardcore TV as much as I put on a Nitro, because especially those, those, those early... Hardcore, t- hardcore TV is a lot funner to watch, a lot more fun to watch, though, because it is only an hour long. True, and true. Some- sometimes not even that much. Well, likely not even that much, because probably commercial breaks, right? Uh, yeah, commercial breaks, and they might not be able to show all the video packages because they use uh, Miserloo from Pulp Fiction. So I'm sure they don't have the rights for that. Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate, too, that there's all these like fill-in themes and everything. Um, but that's, I mean, at least we get to see it, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that was the cool thing about ECW, whereas Paul Heyman had struck a deal where they could use real songs. You know, it doesn't really translate when you have to put that out by another company who doesn't want to sign that deal. Exactly, exactly. And that's a lot that's a lot of music to try to license. And something doesn't carry over. I imagine uh well actually WCW a lot of that didn't carry over either. So um there's a- Yeah, I remember when they were trying to get uh, uh when Sandman was in WWE like legitimately and they were trying to get Enter Sandman and Metallica was like, Oh, we want like a million dollars every time you play it and Vince McMahon was like, Oh, you should probably go fuck yourself. Yeah, they did it for the pay per view and afterwards it was it was something else. No, on- they didn't even do it for the pay per view. No, 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 they did do it for they did for the live stream of the pay per view. They played Enter Sandman. I have a VHS then, I, of One Night Stand with the Enter Sandman entrance. That's the yeah. one I didn't get rid of when the network came up. Yep, that's that's one of the ones I didn't get rid of either. Mm-hmm. Um, but all, all together, there's only like five minutes of Twitter questions. But apparently, I guess they stayed in studio and and, and got on Twitter and answered more questions. Oh, well, that's cool. So I, I I saw something about like they're on for another half hour just answering Twitter questions. So. Um, I guess, you know, 140 characters at a time or whatever, but, um, so you're not getting too deep of stories, but no, still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. Um, he did do kind of answered my question. Cause remember I was like, uh, you know, what, what would, who would you draft to a new ECW or who would, they said who would survive in it? Who would, who would have, thr- who would have thrived in ECW, even if you time displaced them. And, uh, he went through the usual, you know, Brock Lesnar, he thinks Daniel Bryan. Um, he actually shares a story. He's like, you know, we had access to all those guys from, Shawn Michaels wrestling school. And I wonder, I've never asked him, but I wonder if Daniel Bryan was at an early ECW show. Oh, he might have been. I wouldn't be surprised. That's cool. That's that's cool that there's that connection. And especially like him like realizing live on air, it's like, eh, I should ask that guy sometime. Um so I, I was kind of surprised they mentioned um a new Marvel Comics writer. I was kind of yeah, surprised. Yeah, but it, I, I, they kind of have to. You know, and they oh, I know, and it's Paul Heyman. And if it wasn't live and Paul Heyman, they wouldn't have mentioned him. But yeah, they had a graphic ready, 
So uh, that's, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I was wondering about that. Why? Why do you have the graphics? Anyways, um, but no, a pretty cool. I think it's a. a, a I like. I love when they do these theme weeks in general. We had Ultimate Warrior Week the one week, you know, after the unfortunate circumstances. Um, but I think we were going to have that anyways to a point. Um, but but uh, you know, it, it it brings me, gives me awareness to jump back into it. You know, um, because I get into those those lines where I just watch NXT. And that's about it. So, um, awesome, awesome. So, uh, you guys have anything else to say about the ECW uh, um, expose? Uh, well, oh, my, of course, Mike, you're the uh, one that watched it. Was there anything else that really surprised you out of it? Puppy mania. Puppy mania. Puppy mania. <laughs> or puppy palooza. Ex- explain sticks. puppy palooza and puppy why. Puppy palooza. Oh God, I don't know if it was a rib. I don't know if it was something that Joey Styles just had an idea about. Uh, they showed an ad for a, a new pay-per-view coming to a network called Puppy Palooza 6, uh, where Terrier Funk is going to make his return to the ring. Um, and there, there are a lot of jokes about dogs and wrestlers and... I, I think it was to show that the WWE's... Like, if it wasn't a rib, that it was a purposeful thing to show the WWE sense of humor is horrible and ECW sense of humor was better. Yeah. But oh man, I kind of want to see Puppy Palooza 6. Like I want to see a a dog named Terry or Funk running around with a kendo stick in his mouth. I really kind of want to see this now. Like that's a thing I need in my life. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Awesome. Uh, so uh, go check it out if you haven't yet on the network. It's uh, up there, um, um, ECW exposed, and uh, you it's, know. In, it's under the vault for it, those of you who yeah. cannot find it. Because God, I love the WWE Network, but they make things really difficult to find. Sometimes. They do put stuff in weird places, and you, you have to do a search. And the search isn't all that great, to be honest. No. Oh, the search is horrible. Yeah, and I, I don't take credit for that because we just we just cataloged it we didn't do a search engine for it. I mean, those don't know mad mike worked for legit worked for wwe uh as a logger for for a period of time um yep. so he his hands are on some of what you see now with the network now mm-hmm. you i mean i never asked this directly but was there any sign of the network when you worked in that job oh well we all knew that's what it's for Okay. They, 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 yeah, they, they all knew that's what it was for because um, they're actually getting ready to convert, I think, the area we were in into a studio for the network. Oh, so you is that that studio that we see like ECW exposed and everything? I I don't know for sure. I would like to think so because that's what that, that's basically the impression that we got mm-hmm. because on our last day they were clearing everything out of there. Wow. Like, that's why I got the, I have actually a uh, pay per view poster. Like the big ones you see in Titan Tower and everything, we were all allowed to take one home. So I nice. have a nice, lovely Undertaker poster. Nice, nice. It's good to see they took care of you guys. So, all right, we got a few more stories to talk about. First, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the street here in uh, Beachview, P- uh, not Beachview, PA, Beachview in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, some great gourmet stuff you guys can check out if you're in the Beachview area in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Also, a second location in Carnegie, PA, if you're on the way out to the airport, the Pittsburgh International Airport. Uh, they support the show. They send us a pizza every week to feed our in-studio guests, usually on the awesome cast and uh, and the uh, movie rambling movie minute and makes mad. Mike jealous. I've never gotten pizza. I'm gonna have to get you out here again. I know, and I've had slice, and it's delicious. You have had slice. We did get you up there. We had you do the taste test as a New Yorker, and mm-hmm. uh, sounds like it passed. So, um, LB, there's some comic book news, and you're the resident comic book expert, uh, being the guy that does <laughs> Panel Riot at PanelRiot.com. Can you tell me about this next bit of news? Sure can, sure can. Well, uh, Marvel is, uh, is has hired former professional wrestler uh, and uh, frequenter of Talking Dead, CM Punk, as a comic book writer, sort of, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, uh, he's not. Um, he's not going to write. Fu- he's not writing full time. He's not writing on a regular title. He is writing uh, Thor Annual and um, Annual. 
for those of you who don't know, means uh, yearly. So it's a one-off. It's a one-shot. It's uh, – I'm sure I'm sure they're just testing the waters with him, see what kind of publicity he gets. If the publicity is good and his uh, his book is well received, they'll probably have him on for for more things. Um, it, they mentioned in an interview, I think it was with uh, Comic Book Resources. Um, uh, Punk was he basically said that he has a Punisher story in his head, and his idea is he wants to get his foot in the door with Marvel. And he just wants to keep writing for them until they let him write the Punisher story that he wants to write. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as for the book itself, like I said, it's Thor annual. Um, and uh, it's going to be about a young Thor um, who's this, you know, upstart kid. It's before he got Mjolnir. And uh, he's like, well, why doesn't my dad think I'm worthy for this hammer? I'm totally worthy for this hammer. Uh, and it's going to be him kind of bragging to other heroes of the Marvel Universe of, uh, of uh, you know, the things that he's done as a youth. Um, I think it, it should be a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, it's also worth mentioning that um, the Thor that we know as Thor is not currently Thor. Uh, he dropped his hammer and is as of right now unworthy to wield it. So we have a female Thor who's a different character whose true identity has yet to be revealed. So um, it looks like they are uh they're still going to be telling thor stories just uh from uh, an older time hmm. well especially with annuals like you usually get multiple story arcs in one book because they like supersize it so it'll probably just be like one of the back issue stories i'd imagine right mm -hmm. well i think that's cool though I, I, you know obviously he's had other interests um, I mean, he said this, yeah, I, I think in, in interviews before he, he, he left, right. Um, he actually wrote the intro for the, uh, Avengers versus X-Men yes. trade when it came out. He's in, um, so he does have a previous relationship with, uh, with well, Marvel. you gotta think the guy gets to do all of these comic cons. He made some friends. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, absolutely. Just like, and I actually, I, I have the AVX trade that he wrote the forward on. Yeah. It was pretty good. I, I will personally pick up Thor, the Thor annual, even though I don't really read Thor, just because I'm curious about it. Mm -hmm. And also, I feel like Marvel's kind of hedging their bets. They're just having him in for a one-shot. Uh, this guy is someone with a reputation of just kind of bailing when things aren't going the way he wants them to. Um, <laughs> is, is, so. there, is there more than what we know from WWE as far as that reputation, though? Uh, um, no, I was making a joke. Oh, okay. Because he quit his last job. That's true. Okay, that's true. That's true. He showed <laughs> up. Plus, he showed up for and talking. And plus, Marvel Dead. is rebooting their whole line basically next year. So even if his Thor story sucks, it's not going to matter. And either way, either way, it's good press. It's good crossover <laughs> press, which mm -hmm. Marvel, I'm sure, doesn't mind, just like Vince doesn't mind, right? Okay. So there you go. Um, and really, I mean, uh, no. Okay, here's the question: Does he keep CM Punk? Is it going to be C written by CM Punk or Phil Brooks? I wonder. Hmm. That's a good. That is a good question. But I think it'll be written by CM Punk. Hope I so. think it will be. It's, it's more name recognition at this point. Certainly, certainly. Um, it's, it's like it's like when The Rock left. He was still calling himself The Rock until he started calling himself Dwayne. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be like Phil CM Punk Brooks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know what the agreement is. He he's one of the last guys that came in with his name. Um, I'm wondering if he and considering the. Uh, recent lawsuits and, and, and agreements that they had uh, for royalties. It, it, it may be a matter of it, it's his name. So that's why he stopped them. So um, interesting. Uh, when I, I watched the, uh, the second episode of rivalries and they talked about when stone cold left, took his ball and went home. Um, he lost a lot of money. Oh yeah. Because he's so he talks about that on his podcast too. That I didn't realize. Um, um, he because all the royalty checks stopped at that mm -hmm. point because Stone Cold Steve Austin is wholly owned by WWE, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. of course, um, I, I I think it's one of those things where he has an agreement to use it. You know, kind of like The Rock does. Well, I mean, if yeah, anything, when he when he uses it, it's just press for WWE. So exactly, yeah, it's exactly. within all parties' best interest. For uh, for them to work happily together, exactly, and it, it's it, it's nice for them to. Do. It's not like he's going to a rival wrestling promotion. He's going, uh, yeah, he's going to other projects. You know, um, it did take a while for The Rock to drop his name, didn't it? 
He still uses it though. Yeah, I guess I guess in general, but like, like I mean, it, it it may not be on the movie posters anymore, but almost every time in print, it's still Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, yeah, awesome. All right, on that point, let's go to the break, and we're gonna come back with remember when. Hey, there's a lot of wrestling. Uh, go check out Indie Mayhem Show uh, over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com coming out this week. We got a great interview with Asylum, who you may know better as Stone Rockwell adventurer from the uh wwe tr- per, uh training uh, uh per- performance center um video from a few weeks ago uh when they were doing those promos we got to talk to him at combat in clearfield 7 with the iwc also this weekend was salute the troops 2 which involved actually sanjay dutt and hurricane helms uh both of those are going to be released for digital download tomorrow we're, we're filming this on Tuesday, so Wednesday of this week. Uh, look out for those on PittsburghWrestling.com on the, under the RWA and IWC digital downloads. Um, some great stuff, a great, a great weekend of action from both companies. And again, uh, we'll talk about both of those shows over on Indie Mayhem Show. In the meantime, here's a look at, for you guys on video, uh, the last IWC show, Retro Reunion. And we'll be right back with Remember When. <laughs> Welcome back. And again, please go check out everything at PittsburghWrestling.com. So now it's time for Remember When. This week on Remember What, we just talked about CM Punk spinning off his career. He's been doing that. He's been on Talking Dead. He's been all over the place. He's been doing YouTube videos with the Nerdist uh, for a while, actually. So I thought, uh, let's let's talk about wrestler spinoffs. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the names, you know, uh, some of the big names with uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson and Mr. Steve Austin. Uh, but what do you guys, do you have any other ones in mind for uh, uh, wrestlers that have spun off their careers into something else? that stick out uh lb well uh there was a uh, a wrestler known as the million dollar man ted dibiase oh yeah and uh he was great and he was rich and he was uh he was a, a, a good talker and a great heel and uh he parlayed those skills into serving the lord million dollar man ted dibiase became uh an evangelical preacher and uh from all accounts he's a damn good one I haven't seen him personally, but if you would like to donate to uh, to the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Patreon fund, specifically to send me to see uh, uh, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, uh, I would not complain. There's actually a video on YouTube. No, I'd rather have the money. Well, that'd be cool too. That'd be cool too. So, Mad Mike, did you ever? Do yes. You, do you have one? Uh yes, I do, and I'm going to go with. Uh, the side career of the reigning, defending WWE World Heavyweight Champion, oh, Brock Lesnar. That's a good one. Nice. Um, I saw all of Lesnar's UFC fights. Uh, I loved watching him fight, especially when he, like, when he was first starting out and he lost to an ankle lock really quickly because uh, me and the guys I was seeing it with immediately was on the phone. Like, we we're talking about maybe he scouted his match with Kurt Angle. Like, we were just talking about funny shit like that and trying to... Like, the Brock Lesnar versus Kane Velasquez matchup 
made us go nuts all the time because we just kept saying, that's got to be Kane. <laughs> awesome. Uh, for me, it's Chris Jericho and uh, Fozzie. Ah. Because uh, apparently he does well. He's tr- he's 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 um, touring all over the wor- all over the world, really all over the world, um, and in West Virginia. And I know a friend of the show, <laughs> Joe Joe Dabrowski, uh, actually got to attend one recently. Um, I was having just a few miles down the road from a show he was doing in West Virginia. So uh, so a pretty interesting connection there. I can't imagine Joe Dabrowski at a rock concert. <laughs> Do you think he's a mosh pitter? I could see it. Yeah. Oh, I I I assume he's a mosh. I bet he's a slam dancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet he wears the suit in the, the whole time. Uh, Mr. Garza in the chat says, um, "I remember when China went to do porn, hand trucks." Um, um, I I I just have one question for Mr. Garza. Did you happen to see that? Because oh god, it's bad. Hmm. It was really bad. It, it's not something we do a uh, a wrap up on. We'll, we'll put it that way. Oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Carr says that time Ultimate Warrior did a workout video. I want to get oh, back to workout get, videos we're, later. We're, we're getting to that later. Oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, remember when, when Sorg said, fuck me? What? what? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> uh, anything. So uh, on the same topic, we should give honorable mention to two of the um, two wrestlers who had the biggest careers um, with their second careers. And one is DDP with DDP yoga. And the other one is Mick Foley with every motherfucking thing that he does. He's in a Santa Claus movie. Documentary. He do whatever he wants. He's Mick Foley. He Stand up. 30 rock. Yeah. He's been wearing Santa Claus clothes since January 1st. Yeah, it's true. We saw him live wearing them Santa Claus clothes. Yep. Um, and, and we also have uh, Kelly Kyle said Eric Young's fishing show. I, I want to that. point out he did wear the Santa Claus shirt at the gathering of the Juggalos as well. Nice. Oh god. Yes. And hey, um. Hey, and while Jesse... you're on the topic, Shawn Michaels is uh, hunting show. Yes. All, also, uh, he had Triple H on from one of those shows, and apparently they were their 2006 DX glory. <laughs> wow. And uh, and also I don't uh, find that now. Garza uh, also said, "Remember when Jesse Ventura became a governor?" Oh wow! I so, read. Yeah. That I read his first book. <laughs> oh Jesus! It's interesting. I started reading his second one. And I couldn't get through it. So yeah. Uh, but the first one was interesting because it was about him going in and stuff he had to deal with, uh, becoming governor and like the politics issues he had. And he's. I don't think he's one of the two parties. Like I think he's independent. So, uh, which that's pretty big for a, uh, you know a governor. Well, I'm gonna check that out. I feel like I'm talking on my ass on that one. I belong to whatever party searches for answers, McMahon. <laughs> and then his spinoff <laughs> to Conspiracy Theories, which is the inspiration for Joe Dombrowski. Um, I'm asking questions. Wow. Iron Sheik's comedy career with people from the Howard Storm show. And at midnight, apparently. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. when they were in New York, they actually got Iron Sheik to respond to whether Chris Hardwick was the real or jabroni. Yep. Yep. Uh, so great. All right. And of course, Abraham Lincoln became president after wrestling. Of course. That's true I mean, too. That, that, that's really the big one. That's really that's the true. Big one. Until we get president Dwayne, the rock Johnson, because <laughs> one day, one day <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, of course. All right. Uh, if you have any, remember when, um, uh, please tell let us know at mayhem show on the Twitters or on the wrestling Mayhem show, Facebook group, uh, your your spinoffs that the wrestlers have part, uh, partaken in. So a uh, big event coming up, PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, I'll be there with uh, three sessions. Or I'm sorry, two sessions and Awesome Cast Alive. I'm going to be talking about what we do here. I'm going to do two sessions on. Uh, I'm going to call it video on the web or video podcasting. Uh, so a little bit about how we've been using uh, Google Hangout uh, here with some of the shows and some of the spinoff shows we've done like the Raw Wrap-Up, the TNA uh, and NXT after shows, and the Wrestling Game Show, of course, and other things that I find in my feed Friday morning I have to process. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> I love the surprises you'd leave me uh, for Friday morning. But, Especially uh, if we have a two-hour game show. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
But uh, if you want to, you don't have to be in Pittsburgh. It's, of course, going to be downtown at Point Park University, November 22nd through 23rd. But you can also find it streaming, much like we do here, um, at podcamppittsburgh.com. So go check it out there uh, for that whole weekend. And uh, that, that we've been a part of PodCamp since the first. Right, LB? It's true. It's true. We've been doing panels for years. Yep. Yep. So, I, I, I remember one of the one of the first times I was exposed to PodCamp. I haven't been able to go, sadly. But uh, you guys gave a chopping lesson. We did. We did, and we mm-hmm. almost and we almost killed Doug Durda. We almost killed him. And um, some of you, uh, I I remember fondly like that week that 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 weekend where we it wasn't PodCamp, it was actually boot camp, I think, where mm-hmm. uh, we first met Wojciech, who's now is a Googler. Uh, Chris Brogan, our big name in, in social media. And uh, I, I remember I just team keep, keep wooing so we would kill somebody. Um, so, yes. Yes. We very nearly did. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't she volunteer to get chopped? Because she's tiny and delicate and we would not have yes. hit her sword. That's true, too. That is very true. I, 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 the only exposure I had with PodCamp was I went down one time and you guys were having a bowling event. And I was used as a chopping dummy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Those were the days. Go check it out, podcamppittsburgh.com. We'll have a plenty of, I'm sure, videos and stories from the weekend. Uh, so we have a few news items for us to touch on. First of all, Triple H and Stephanie have training videos, workout videos. Um, did you say there's a, is there a trailer for this, Mike? Uh, yeah, there's a trailer for it on, on the, um, oh, where did I find it? I think it was on, sh- on, um, uh, up rocks. I can link it to you in the. Okay. Yeah. I I would do that. Stephanie is very lean. She mm-hmm. got that lean muscle that uh, that I uh, I just can't seem to attain. <laughs> and. It, oh, what's that, Mike? In the. Uh, oh, for the workout. Uh, Stephanie is working out with Alexa Bliss and Naomi. Oh wow. And I, I didn't get I didn't watch the Triple H one because honestly the Stephanie one interested me more. But uh, yeah, gross. It, so gross, but, super gross. But Stephanie McMahon is a very fine looking young woman. Gross. And, and Triple H has also done a book based on uh, workouts. Yes. So that that's not the only. Uh, must watch Triple H training video. Now this is from something else. Yeah, he's he's pretty frequently featured in uh, uh, Muscle and Fitness mm-hmm. or Men's Health magazine or one of those magazines you can buy steroids out of. I don't read them. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, interesting, interesting. Um, and, and they're billing it as uh, "Learn How to Work Out from the Authority." So, nice. the, <laughs> the authority on weight training. Oh, there you go. There you go. See, that one's for free, Vince. <laughs> that one's for free. All right, we're a few months in this. Um, about everybody on the show here has had the network since what February, the end of February, when we had our free week, when it hardly worked, and we had a live NXT special that hardly worked. Um, but we did get an email this week, or was it an email, or was it a message? No, it was an email. Um, hey guys, I signed up for the free trial. Did, did, did we get a name off of this? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was just a message that you... I think it was a message I received, like a random yeah. one. Oh, he's and he's been on the Facebook. I'm sorry. Um, he said, hey, guys, uh, signed up for the free trial of the network, and I was wondering if y'all could get me some ideas, can give me some ideas on what to watch besides NXT. Because, hey, NXT is the obvious one, right, guys? So Well, yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike, what do you recommend that you've been catching up on? Oh, uh, there, there's so much stuff. Honestly, if you haven't seen... Every WrestleMania and every Royal Rumble match, I would I would binge watch those. Mm-hmm. Um, that that'd be my personal thing. I love to just randomly go to Royal Rumbles and like swipe through until you get to the start of the Royal Rumble match and just watch it. I had the thought to like start doing that as well, or or at least like some of the early Survivor Series as well, which you guys did actually. Uh, if you go to the YouTube or if you're on the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Super Feed on iTunes and Stitcher, these guys did a watch party for the main event of Survivor Series '89. And yeah. wh- which which and, match uh, was that? Uh, it was the uh, Ultimate Warriors team against the Heenan family. Nice. Oh God, it was. I I've never 
like I know WWE and a lot of their video games and stuff have pushed the Ultimate Warrior and Sheamus similarities, and I never really saw the comparison until I watched some old Ultimate Warrior again, and oh my god, he's totally Sheamus, and now I hate him even more. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, LP, do you have any uh, favorites from the network? Well, to be honest, I was going to say exactly what Mad Mike said. Uh, going back and watching those old WrestleManias are—it's uh, a lot of fun to get caught up in the uh, in the storylines and in the the big epic matches that uh, of the time, um, because they always do such great video packages uh, for for WrestleMania matches, and of course the Royal Rumble matches are fun. Everybody knows it's my favorite pay per view of the year. Um, so in lieu of that, uh, I'm going to say go and check out that new ECW content that was added recently. Um, ECW was uh, uh, something completely different from any anything else that was on television at the time. And uh, go back and watch that and learn why people still chant ECW at WWE events. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, I want to throw out uh, – I want to curveball this one a little bit because I don't think this is one that comes to a lot of people's minds. But the WrestleMania Rewind ones um, – you can go back and watch the WrestleManias, but maybe if you watch, say, WrestleMania three with Hogan and Andre, uh, other side, other than the vastness of that arena and how amazing that is, um, taking that look, if you don't know how they got to that point, to, like for instance, to me, Andre the Giant was always the bad guy with the short hair in the black singlet, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's when I got into wrestling. I didn't know the former Andre the Giant with the fro and the good guy and the undefeated, right? And um, asking if you wanted a peanut. So, and especially if you're younger um, and, and have an experience, especially the Attitude Era stuff or anything like that, um, I think there's a good collection there. If there's a match that you're like, oh, I always hear about this and I always see the same thing and I always see the stare down with Andre and Hogan, you know, go back and watch it. Find out why it was important um, because they're really nice because they do a documentary basically of the build up. Uh, behind the scenes and kind of looking at like you see, you know, Andre challenging and what led to it and everything like that. Um, And then you get to see the match in its entirety. So it's nice. It's not just a documentary about the match. You don't actually see wrestling. Um, It's it's both. And I I think it's really nice how they've done that, Um, because if you go back and watch some WrestleManias, like you have to get through special delivery Jones before you get to the main event. (laughs) But it's worth it. It's worth it. Watching all that crazy shit makes the, the really great main events uh, worth it somehow. That's true. That's true. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I went and uh, I got the WrestleMania set uh, DVDs a few years ago. Um, and I was watching the WrestleManias in that period where I wasn't into wrestling. That, that, that mid-90s era. And it was just so tough to get through them, right? Um, mm. and, and that's kind of the thought I have uh, with, with this side of things. Um, we had actually a thread about this over on the Facebook page. Uh, had a lot of suggestions. Chris Spiker actually says the Attitude Era for sure when wrestling became fun again. Um, and you can see how it really was. Like everybody talks about it and there's documentaries about it. You can go watch an episode of Raw and see top to bottom. You know, you, you hear Vince Russo on podcasts and on his article talking about, we did this and everybody had a place and this. Go back and watch an episode. See if, he, see if he's right in your opinion. You know, I'm not saying he's not or anything, but, um, but you, you can go look, you know. You can compare weeks of Raw to weeks of Nitro and see what you think you would have been watching. If That's you true, too. That's true, too. And if you uh, if you have the book uh, Death of WCW, uh, you can see the ratings breakdown of what wow. other people watched for wow. those very same episodes. That's I never thought about that. I had that book. I, I, I might want to do that. I mean, there's so many things you can do to re-experience or experience for the first time. I love it. Oh, uh, and not to mention uh, the new content that's on there besides NXT, Slam City is oh, super fun. Go find there is a um all together uh, Saturday morning I flipped on WWE Network cuz I was just again kind of sleepy and kind of wanted to just lay there and put something on and they had Slam City play at like 9 a.m. and it was the all the episodes of Slam City in like a half hour segment. Perfect. Love it. Um it, you're going to want that to be an ongoing series. It's so much fun. Oh, and any documentary that you wanted to watch but never picked up on DVD there are a hell of a lot of them on the network. Yes, and, and more uh, coming all the time. Yeah, I mean, the Rise and Fall of ECW is coming on the network this week, which, if you haven't seen it, fucking see it. 
because it's really, really good. Uh, the CM Punk documentary is on there. Yes. The Hardy Boys documentary the is Jericho on there. Jericho one, the Big Show one. Um, Big Show The John Cena one is actually really, really good. If you watch that Cena documentary and and watch what he goes through and are not a Cena fan like Will afterwards, you have no soul because the <laughs> man works. Just the one. You hear that, Jen? You hear that, fucking Jen Carlin's? Now, I'm not Watch saying Jen Carlin doesn't have a soul. I'm saying she just has an affinity for guys in jeans and tank tops. <laughs> Mike isn't saying that Jen doesn't have a soul. He's just implying it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, from the chat, Matt Carlin says when he first got the network, he spent an entire Saturday morning watching the opening to every WrestleMania. <laughs> Pyro. Nice. Pyro. Sorg, I'm shocked you didn't push Saturday Night's main event. <gasps> I didn't think about that. You always push Saturday Night's Man. Event. Oh yeah, I need to get back to it now. They put the rest of them up too. I, I stopped around eighty eight or eighty nine. Um, I got to. I think I got up to the Andre the Giant uh, to Earl Hebner title screw over for Hogan. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, Sa- if-, Sa- if you. Oh, sorry, uh, but Saturday Night's Main Event is that was because you had superstars. So imagine Monday Night Raw. Happened maybe once a month in <laughs> SNL's time slot, and it's also interesting to watch to it. Uh, watch it because one production values. Check out the green screens on some of the early ones. Uh, holy crap! <laughs> um, um, you know, at the end when SNL has those really short bits with lots of commercials because they were filling an hour and a half. These things cut down to about an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting to see that, and you're like, why? Why are they just coming up and talking, coming up and talking, and then they say goodbye? They were filling those spots. Oh yeah. Oh or, yeah. They're, or they're, they were showing the pile driver video. Or mm-hmm. they might they might just be mid commercial spots too. It's really interesting. It's really interesting to look back on that and and kind of remember because that was a major part of my early wrestling watching. Um, so that that was always pretty cool. Um, again, also, from if you've never seen any Halloween Havoc main event. Oh jeez! Just, just, just do that. Jeez! Just make yourself feel way, way better about the product we're seeing now, and watch some Halloween Havoc from 1995. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! Um, I, I wanted to touch on some of these other ones from the Facebook. Uh, the Monday Night Wars is tremendous. Um, and, uh, any pay per views you've missed and, and you always heard about, go watch it. You heard about like maybe you always heard stories about that time where Hulk Hogan left in the middle of a pay-per-view, the bash at the beach, uh, I think 99 or 2000, uh, and Vince Russo came out and shot on him. Go watch it. You know, you can find out Well, you can skip to the good parts too. Um, or watch the first match of every nitro because it's usually a really good luchador match. Um, <laughs> you ever want to see the pay-per-view where Sid broke his leg? That's on oh, there. Yeah. You can no, watch it. I thought no, I was no. watching that one at one point and I'm like, Oh no, it's going to happen. Oh, it didn't happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cause I was doing a string of, of like late WCW pay-per-views for a while. Uh, are Matt, you too young to know why Rey Mysterio uh, is a big deal? <laughs> now you can find out, go watch all ECW and WCW road. Wild. Have you ever wanted to know what he actually looks like under that mask? Spoiler alert. It's a child. You can check that out. Yes, yes. Um, the whole Legends of Roundtable series, Leg- Legends of Wrestling Roundtables, which was something from WWE On Demand, Mike. Oh, yeah. The- I forgot those were on the network. Me too. Those are, those are fun. That was like all oh. I watched for a while. Those are really, really good, especially the later ones, because mm-hmm. they have Eric Bischoff talking to Monday Night Wars. With oh, Superman. and they're sitting there and really accusing oh. Eric Bischoff of, why did you do this thing? Uh, and he's just taking it. Yeah. He's just taking it. It's great. It's very frank. They, they're sitting around with, like, stogie cigars and, and, and um, scotch and whiskey and shit. It's, it, it's amazing. You watch them, at least, if you get nothing of substance out of it, Watch it for Michael Hayes' outfits. <laughs> because that, I have it on good authority because I know people who still work there. That is how he dresses every day to work. Uh, recommendation, uh, recommendation from Matt Carlins. Uh, go watch any old WCW pay-per-view. Wait for Dean Malenko match. And 
recommendation from Alex Carr is the Invasion pay-per-view. Yes. Uh, especially where Trish and Lita almost fell off the ramp because the ramp was divided into a V for the WCW. It was so for, weird. For the Alliance and the WWE section. It was so weird. Hey, that rivalries, um, the, the part two of the rivalries with Vince McMahon and uh, Stone Cold, they go heavy into the inv- invasion angle and explaining why it didn't work. I haven't watched that yet because it was only part one first, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Part two's up now? Okay. It was one of those things that randomly played this morning, so I'm like, "Ah, I'm not going to nap this hour. Um, So, (laughs) sick days are fun around here. Uh, And I still edited two wrestling DVDs. Well, let me point that out. And then I took a nap the rest of the day. Um, (laughs) Got stuff to do around here. So with that, let us know which which you think. <laughs> like uh, Mike, you saying every WrestleMania binge them? Yes, I did that uh, seriously. The if you don't have the network, if you're listening to us right now, and you don't have the network. At this point, I don't really care what your reason is. Even if you just watch the pay per views and NXT, that is worth more than ten dollars right there. Yeah, easily. Even yeah. if it's a bad pay per view, four four episodes of NXT a month is worth ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So I don't think we've talked anything recent wrestling this episode. Uh, what really happened, Sorg? It was in London. Yeah. Uh, we have Team Authority. We talked about last night on Raw. Uh, I think that Team Authority is the most badass looking Survivor Series team ever. At least they and were. Seth Rollins. And, and Seth Rollins. No, no, I count Seth Rollins. I see it's dude, okay. I said this last night. It's Seth Rollins, who already looks like he's dressed like Zod, and a bunch of big badasses. Sorg, he's the Goldu of the Ginyu squad. I don't even know what that All means. Alright, Dragon Ball Z. He's he's the little short guy. Everyone else is huge and tall and massive. But still, I, I, but still, I, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm looking, it, is the, it is the most I've looked for, forward to a Survivor Series match in a long time, so. Um, the only reason not to get network is if you're trying to stick it to WWE, then why are you listening to this show? Yep. Because if, if you're trying to stick it to WWE and you're watching raw, sorry, you're failing in your mission. Wow. But, uh, all right. So ba- back to raw. Um, I don't like team Cena. No, near do I. I, yeah, I but wa- did you really think that he was going to pick anybody worth a shit? It was either going to be these guys or the Usos. I prefer Real, the Usos. Realistically. I prefer the Usos bouncing off of Mark Henry and Luke Harper. I prefer that. Like, uh, but Big Show, Sheamus, oh, God, just kill me. I don't even care who his fifth guy is. It's either going to be Ryback or Randy Orton, and I don't really care about either of them. Like Dolph is, if Dolph Ziggler ends up being the sole survivor for Team Cena, you got me hooked. That's not going to happen though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. We're we're another week away. We'll talk more about Survivor Series uh, next week on the show. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, we do need to mention this. Global Force Wrestling is uh. getting JR. Oh, what is this? What is this response? Sorg, it's not a Global Force Wrestling show. They're sponsoring it like Slim Jim sponsored Halloween Havoc. Um, I think... Yes. Because they don't have a roster, Sorg. There's still a company that's presenting this. That we, we talked about this is like the Quentin Tarantino fed that's bringing this over. No, that's Lucha Underground. No, 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 Quit. no, 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 Jim Ross announcing Japanese wrestling and arguably yes, the that, best that Japanese wrestling that so, I'm excited for, but I don't it's global force wrestling is not a company. Well, G- give me, give me like roster members. They have 
It's Give not employees. A, okay, it's not a wrestling company yet in in a in a rostered wrestling company, but it's a company that's bringing over a show. It's presenting a show. I think that's it's the new NWA. Says Alex Cars. I don't think any of these work. <laughs> I don't think any of these Slim, comparisons work. Slim Jim prevents new prevents New Japan wrestling. That's, sure. That's what it is. Sure. Sure. All right. On that note, let me know. And you guys in the chat room, there's a lot of you guys in there. Please let me know. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, Papa Lunchbox? Well, Sork, uh, we were we were watching the show last night in the hangout like you do. And uh, I was laying on the couch enjoying some, uh, some Monday Night Raw. And I fell asleep um, somewhere in the third hour. And uh, I woke up to uh, uh, my... <laughs> Uh, something going on on my television. I look up at my computer screen and Matt Carlin's is just staring at me. So I closed <laughs> my computer screen. Um, and I laid there and I was like, oh man, I fell asleep in the middle of the show. Well, I can't feel too bad. I took a melatonin before, uh, um, you know, probably, you know, right around the second hour, give or take, you know, take my cat pills. I'm getting ready for work this morning and I look on my coffee table and there's the melatonin that I didn't take. So what I learned was Monday Night Raw is as an effective uh, uh, sleep aid as melatonin. Wow! Wow! At least pre tape draws from Europe. And can I, uh, okay, uh, Bad Mike? What do you? What's your thing you learned? Uh, I learned that Chavo Guerrero does not give a fuck about WWE's chair laws because he hit Sexy Star in the face with a fucking chair. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was a thing. I spoiled the end of episode two, but I don't care because I was surprised. I need to watch it. I need to catch up. I need to get a routine of, of Lucha Underground here. So I, I also, uh, uh, Actually, I, the other thing Alex Carr has learned, so we can have him take credit for it. <laughs> um, uh, from the chat, Alex Carr has learned that a new day is booming. Kofi Kinson yes. joining, apparently. Uh, we talked about this on the wrap-up last night, too. I'm so excited to see Biggie's video next week. Yes, <laughs> I'm yes. more excited about that than I am for anything else about wrestling. And uh, and and, and uh, Garza learned that Cena is a bully. It looks like the Thugonomics era, where he's like punching kids in the face. There's a gif in the chat room right now. Um, and I <laughs> yeah, think... he fucking chucks his kid's dad. Is that... Then... No, he is punches that Mason the dad and, and Matt Carlin throws the child into a car. It's pretty great. That kind of looks like Mason and Matt Carlin's a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> it's just like a pay per view party over at the Carlin's. Uh, Riz, why Jen's so grumpy? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I learned. She I knew... yells every time I mention John Cena. She just yells at me. <laughs> I, I learned. Riz says I learned that I knew a lot more than I thought I would about the 1989 Survivor Series. Oh, great episode of the Wrestling Game Show, WrestlingGameShow.com. Um, keyword WWE laws. I don't know what that's from. Uh, Bobby F J Town learned that there's a new lady in my life, and that lady is Paige. Why all of a sudden? Uh, Hot Wheels learned that it's Hurricane because they're in England. Uh, Hurricane Helms is awesome to hang out that's with after show. Riz, or, or, I'm sorry, Wheel says that Hurricane Helms is awesome to hang out with after shows. He was in the main event, of course, to the RWA show at Cal U on Sunday. Um, I learned how important a ring announcer is. Um, RWA salute to the troops, too. Fantastic show in the ring. Great match. Not much of a dud. Top to bottom. Um, uh, uh, as far as the matches go, as far as the wrestling goes, great matches. But just to have a ring announcer that has never announced, let alone in front of people, he's apparently a radio DJ. Um, but he was from Cal U. They needed a ring announcer. That the the normal one was busy that day. <laughs> These gifts are, are throwing me off. Um, <laughs> I just see like CM Punk like smiling and shaking his head and looking around. His freaking that's me out. the first time CM Punk has smiled in five years. So that's cool. That's probably it. That's when he left. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, guys. Um, <laughs> But uh, but no, that, that that timing and the announcing and announcing the right wrestlers, um, uh, promoters don't. Not that I'm blaming the promoter in this case because I thought it was a really good idea. I like the idea that they got a Cal U guy to do it, and you know somebody with some, some broadcasting knowledge didn't help out much, right? So 
thankfully we got to cut them out most of the DVD, so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, live, it kind of kills the mood a little bit, especially when there's such you know such great matches going on, uh, match to match. But we'll talk about that more on the Indie Mayhem show tonight with our interview with Asylum. <laughs> and uh, Matt Carlin's also learned that you can buy Titty Master underpants. Oh, yeah. He was sharing that in the chat room earlier. Um, you know what? I don't wear the tidy whitey, so, so I can't partake in that one. Um, and, and Bobby also learned that two stunt doubles are better than everyone. Yes, no matter the size. Uh, oh, jeez. Mini Miz Swaggle was amazing. Um, on that note, guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, please check out our other shows, the Raw Wrap Up. It has its own feed on Stitcher and iTunes, as well as the uh, Impact and NXT After Show, and the um, the Wrestling Game Show has its own feed as well. All of them on Stitcher and iTunes. You can check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super yeah. Feed, and of course the Indie Mayhem Show. Guys, will plug the show. Oh, 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 there's another show that, that LB does. I want, I want to plug a show. Go for Panel Riot. Uh, PanelRiot.com. I talk about comics and comic book related things. Uh, this week is uh, the episode is called Thought Bubbles. And if you want to know what that means, you're going to have to tune in. Check it out at PanelRiot.com. Launches tonight at midnight. Nice. Go check it out. And um, with that, where are my notes at? Hey, thanks, Mike Allen, for all, doing the notes and the tweets all night long. Uh, check them out, Mike Allen PR on the Twitters. Um, also, please, did somebody, somebody delete my notes? Somebody delete my notes. It's my outro notes. What the fuck? Oh, no. Was it Mike Allen? Um, big shouts to basicsickness.com for the intro, outro music. Go check them out for some free music and videos over there. And, you, of course, you can find everything we do over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, iTunes, Ta-ka. Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and YouTube. iHeartRadio for audio, Radio. video, subscription. So you do not miss an episode. And uh, you can drop us a line to that email address. Good time. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingBamShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Remember, we have a contest for next week for IWC's Best of CM Punk Volume 1 digital download for the best email. It can be funny. It can be thought-provoking. Whatever wins out, give it a shot. Uh, good times so, at Wrestling Seriously, Mission. can I answer? No, Seems you can't enter. We'll talk about this Damn after it. the show. No. Damn it. It's a good prize. If you're hey, Sorg. Cons- yeah? Sorg, can yeah. I? No. Shit. No, no, you can't. Well, fuck you. I already have a copy. So there. <laughs> well, there's that. Um, but we'll have. We're going to try to have a contest a week uh, for some great, fabulous prizes. And also, um, oh, what else? We're here live Tuesdays, live at SorgatronMedia.com about 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Indie Mayhem Show usually around 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, most weeks, as long as we don't have a pre-recorded interview like this week. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. A lot of guys jumping in there, uh, including Kyle, Carlin's Garza, Bobby FJ town wheels, cars, uh, mad Mike. Wait, wait, you're on the show. Uh, Riz, Kyle and Eamon. Um, we, I, I know we got people in there from across the country representing California, Texas, New York, New York state, um, Florida, I believe in there. And of course, right here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, so, uh, jump in there every Tuesday. If you want to uh, have your voice heard and put in, uh, uh, animated gifts that distract me during the show. It's one way to participate. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. don't Especially have actually a... one of the ultimate warrior during our promo. <laughs> yes, that was amazing. Uh, we don't have a prize for that yet. But until next time, mayhem out. This show is a member.